Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about the final episode from season four, The Collision. If you're enjoying these videos, please do hit like and subscribe. This episode is the second appearance of actress Kathleen Quinlan in the role of Selena Linville. She has been away at school and she has returned and she is inspired and fired up about what's going on in Spain with the, uh, the war over there and how she feels that is really going to be important to the freedom of the free world and really wants and is demanding that John Boy share her passion for this and that as a writer, he needs to be over there. They should go over there together and she will take pictures and he will write stories because people like Hemingway, great authors are, are over there and that's where the action is and he can't possibly just stay in this little backwoods area and make his mark. Uh, she had been his love interest in the episode, The Thoroughbred. So she is playing on that relationship to try to inspire him to join in with her plans. Selena's grandfather, Colonel Linville, is played in this episode by Edward Franz. We saw him before in the episode, The Courtship, as Olivia's uncle, Uncle Cody. Um, and here we have him playing Colonel Linville, who was originally played in The Thoroughbred by actor Frank Jansen. So lots of switching around of uh, characters and actors. Um, what we start finding out is something's going on uh, with the Colonel because uh, they hear, the Waltons, John hears about there being some auction of of things, but he just figures they're getting rid of some older things. John Boy is invited to dinner and Selena has uh, come to dinner wearing a basically a uniform uh, in representation of what's going on in Spain and, and continues to try and push her grandfather as well, but he's, he's kind of having none of it and just used to Selena's passionate uh, feelings about various different things. They have dinner and, and John Boy takes a bit of teasing because she has ordered lobster and John Boy has no clue what to do with hard shell lobster. So it's a it's an uncomfortable evening for John Boy. Ultimately, we find out uh, that Colonel Linville has basically lost all of his money. Times have been tough and he has had to sell everything, the house, the land, except for this sort of caretaker's cottage where he plans to move with their housekeeper. Um, this is devastating news to Selena. Um, she doesn't want to hear about it. She doesn't understand what's going on and realizing that they've lost everything, she, she runs off and John Boy goes after her. She hasn't been speaking to John Boy because he won't fall in with her plans, but now all of a sudden she is embarrassed by her circumstances. And ultimately John Boy catches up with her and they sort of have it out. And he basically tells her, he knows she's not going to Spain. She's not going anywhere and that she should stay and transfer to Boatwright, that she can be closer and help care for her grandfather. Uh, and so in the end, that is what she ends up doing. The subplot in this episode revolves around Elizabeth, who has a new friend who has recently moved to the area and is going to school, Ariel. And it's a common circumstance of no matter what Elizabeth does, Ariel has a better story. Ariel's parents buy her more things. They've taken her on more trips. So here's poor little Elizabeth just trying to feel like she can enjoy some little triumph, something that she has and is constantly being overshadowed by Ariel. And, and because of that, she starts losing, Elizabeth starts losing interest in some of the things that she was excited about, like um, a pencil box that Ben gives her, but Ariel has a better one. It's almost like the one I have at home. Same kind? Mine was imported from Switzerland. My father gave it to me for my birthday. So that's that's a tough little pill for, for Elizabeth to swallow there. I did find it odd in this scene at Ike Godsey's store when Elizabeth uh, comes to get a pencil for her pencil box that she's wearing a very sort of ruffled dress. Uh, and it's never 
a, the type of dress that we saw Elizabeth wear, and I don't think we ever saw it again. So I think this was a one and done where I may not have been the only one who thought that this wasn't typical clothing for Elizabeth. Elizabeth decides to go and share this fairy stone that she has to show it to Ariel. And when she gets to her house, she finds out that all is not how Ariel projected it, that she actually, her real name is Effie, and she lives with her aunt because her parents both died. And they live in a very simple little little cottage. And she doesn't have all these things. She's Elizabeth finds her in her room, making up stories, looking through a wish book. Um, and I think with Elizabeth realizing what the real circumstance is, uh, it changes her whole perspective. Uh, Effie, Ariel shares that, uh, you know, she just makes up these stories and Elizabeth shows her this fairy stone and gives it to her and they have a pretend tea party. Some details of the episode. Uh, this scene where uh, a number of them are on the front porch, this would have been shot on the sound stage because you can see through those windows into the living room. You can see the living room's lit. We aren't trying to disguise everything, but you notice that we never see off of the porch. We are close enough that you do not identify the ends of the porch where the stairs would have been, or we don't get a view of where the barn would have been. We aren't far enough back to see the whole front of the yard. So this is um, the clever way in which they utilize these sets and, and this replica of the front porch that was on our soundstage. This was a fun episode for me because of all the, the horse work involved in it. Not that I got to do any riding, but um, this was, I was already riding by this point uh, because of um, a costumer on our show. And in fact, the stunt double for Kathleen Quinlan was one of the assistant trainers where where I was riding and I'm not sure if this was a horse from that barn or someplace else but Loria who was the assistant trainer did the stunt riding for this so all the jumps and and anytime you don't, aren't seeing a close-up of Kathleen this was the stunt double and uh, so there's a number of times here where you see her taking fences back and forth and John Boy, I love John Boy scrambling to get out of the way of the log that he is on. And watching this just now, it was reminiscent. Um, I recently, uh, because I'm working with a new trainer, have started to uh, learn a bit about cross country jumping, which is a whole new a style for me because I always work just in an arena. So to be out in the open jumping natural sort of fences. Uh, and just a few weeks ago, I went to do some of my first training, uh, you know, learning, learning this. And so uh, here is a shot of me with my horse, Maya, as we are taking um, one of these sort of natural obstacles. And as you see on the landing, she's a little excited and it's like, I want to go. <laughs> so uh, I am just at the beginnings of this kind of jumping, but it was an adventure for me as well. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the episode, The Collision. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons about various episodes, more of your questions in an Ask Judy, and some more future guests. Thanks for watching.